sweet, sweet Jamaica. Have you ever considered migrating to the mystical island of Jamaica? Join me, Michelle Moore, and special guests as we explore the world of Jamaica with those at home in Jamaica and those away in the diaspora, right here on the Home and Away Show. Hi and welcome to Home and Away Jamaica. If you haven't already done so, hook up on Facebook and Twitter, Home and Away JA, interact and let me know what you think of the show. This week I've brought my aunt on the show. Reason being, although she's visited Jamaica several times, she completely ruled it out as a place to live. Um, she listened to a lot of negativity from other people. I remember when I told her that I moved out there and she just had this strong negative opinion about living and, and working out there. So I really wanted to bring her on the show to really speak about her experience and how she's made uh, a U-turn. So I would like to welcome my aunt to the show. Hi, Michelle, thank you. How do you feel being on air? Um, yeah, I feel good, a bit nervous, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I know you're not one to be quiet, so, you know, don't <laughs> hold back. Just free up yourself. I will. Well, I wanted you to come on the show, you in particular, because I have a few things I want to pick at you. Mm -hmm. And um, being relevant to the show and Jamaica, I thought, what a great interview I hope this would be. So thank you for coming on board, for one. You're welcome. And I really want the people to hear about, you know, your journey, um, where you were a few months ago mm -hmm. and your future plans as it relates to Jamaica. So right now you're a registered nurse. Yeah. Registered, uh, general adult nurse. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a bit about your working history before then. Um, well, I left school and I went straight into work, um, as it was very easy to do back in those days. Um, mm -hmm. I went into, I was a trainee counts clerk and for the next sort of 20 years after that, I carried on working in like admin, doing accounts or legal stuff. And my last job before I started to train to be a nurse, I worked um, for one of the top hospitals here in London, um, doing the legal stuff and the accounts, which was a good job, a very good high paid job and I had my own mm -hmm. office and freedom flexibility everybody used to say it's a cushy little number and it yeah. in some ways it was but it was boring and I had no kind of job satisfaction I needed to do more stuff it more and also mm -hmm. what made it even worse was waking up every day in the dark well not every day but in the winter months it was waking up in the dark and the cold to go to work and coming home and um you know just like doing nothing basically just prepare myself for the next day just to do the same thing over and over and again and then it was yeah. just like you know waiting looking forward to my weekends because that was the only free time and that just went quick and i just thought to myself this is no quality of life it's just you know i'm just living to pay the bills and and that was it really and maybe just to go on holiday a couple of weeks every year so one day, enough was enough, I woke up and I thought, do you know what, I'm going to hand in my notice, but I had to have a plan. Because I was working in a hospital and I sort of liked the environment, I thought I can train to be a nurse. But during that time, I was given the opportunity to have a placement, an international placement, uh, anywhere in the world except the US or Canada. Okay. So I chose Jamaica, being that my parents come from Jamaica, and I know that one day, one, if not both of them, will return home. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I may want to go back with them for a few years. So it'd be good for me to know how the health system run over, you know, the health service or health system run over there and, you know, get to feel of, um, you know, the whole environment and way of life and stuff over there. It was February 2014 when I embarked on my four week placement in Uwe, mm -hmm. Kingston as a student nurse and it was a fabulous experience. I'd highly recommend it. Why why do you say that? Why are you highly recommending um, it? I think because especially like Jamaica's like class of the third world country and um the patients over here are privileged and they but they take things for granted. They don't realise how privileged it is. I just come off a night shift and even last night I had a patient Every sort of half hour, 45 minutes, asking me to come and plump up a pillow. 
in Jamaica, you didn't get a pillow unless you bought it in yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? They're, they're too privileged. They're, they're too, we're, we're too privileged over here. Demands and, and expectations uh, are quite high, would you say? Over here, definitely, definitely. And they're mm. quick to sort of like want to make complaints and everything about you. And, and they expect you to sort of like give almost, you know, to sort of like really work yourself to the bone. If I give a little short comparison of, um, you know, how things work over here and how things work in Jamaica. Over here, patients get, well, everything's there for them. Bed sheets, the blankets, menu. You don't just get your food, you get a choice. You get a menu to choose from. So you can either have a normal um, sort of like European menu or you can have a West Indian African right. Caribbean menu. And then cater for people food. with like special requirements like diabetes. Yeah, you get like the halal. And because we're such a diverse um, community or nation, they cover for everybody. So you, no one's going to go hungry no matter what religion or beliefs are. In Jamaica, you got you didn't get no menu. You've got a set meal. Either you take it or you leave it or your family will bring you in food. Um, and But they were grateful. Nine times out of ten, they were they was, they was grateful for it. Over here, they were half eat the food and then decide that they don't like it they want something else and then we've obligated to feed that person yeah. so we're going to have to go out away to get them more food sounds like they're else. quite sport in the way they're they're used to it being a certain standard i guess they feel they know they can sort of work their way around getting what they want of course of course it's it, of course and it's just like I mean, they're beginning to adapt this uh suing culture where they will mm. sue you do you understand what I'm saying? If they're not getting the proper care or whatever. So it's all a matter of them just using yeah. the system to, the, you know, to, 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 you know, to their right. advantage. Just and, you know, like sometimes that. too much choice in life is not such exactly. a good thing, you know, because that's where you get people exploiting the system, taking advantage. And then where do you draw the line? Well, this is why, you know, the National Health Service will soon not be a National Health Service as far as it might be, because they're one their self dry. So that's just one side of it. The other side of it is the waste. I know there is like infection control and if you put on a pair of gloves and you walk to the patient's bedside but you don't actually touch the patient but you go with the intention of touching the patient but you don't actually get around yeah. to doing it, you've got to go and you've got to throw those gloves away. In Jamaica, mm -hmm. I was on a ward and we had one box of gloves to share between the whole of the staff doctors and nurses alike so you had to pick and choose when to wear the, the, the gloves too so even if you're doing personal care like personal hygiene like bathing the patient or whatever you don't necessarily you've got to think mm, is this patient does it warrant me wearing gloves this is in jamaica you've got to think to yourself you know you don't waste it so you know how clean or or, or how, how much mess is the patient gonna make right. kind of in thing. terms of comparison in terms of patient care and that ethical kind of um, approach do you think that's made a difference having sort of limitations or lack of resources or equipment as it were I was going through the policy because I had to do, obviously I had to do a report for my university, especially when I got back. And as I reported back, the policies are almost identical to the policies we have over here. All the policies are almost identical to the British one, but because of the lack of resources, they're unable to work the way we do. They're unable to carry out the things, you know, that that is in the policies because they haven't got the resources to carry out because they can't afford to, they can't. So they're putting themselves at risk as well, which 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 um isn't really right or fair. Tell me more about Jamaica. So what was your experience like working as a, a nurse in Jamaica? Because you didn't know anybody at all. You didn't know anything about the hospital. So I want you to run through the whole experience, what you saw, the team that you worked with. How was that experience from your perspective? I've got to get back so first of all the, the reason why but before i actually came to the decision of even going to jamaica well you know me Mish, i always went to jamaica on holiday so i've been to jamaica quite a few times on holiday i was like a tourist in jamaica every time i went i was like a tourist may see the family for one day but I'd always end up back at my hotel beach and and, and etc so i always mm. used to say Jamaica's a good holiday destination i love the country but i'll never live over there and forget about working and living over there that wasn't going to be me ever 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 Exactly. And that is why I want to pick your brain right now, because to say never, you literally ruled it out. Yeah. And that's uh, where I want to quiz you today. So let's take a quick tea break and we'll be back in a couple. Jamaica. Jamaica means a lot to me. Coming like heaven. It's part of me. The connection, the people, the culture, the vibe is just amazing. Like nowhere better than New York. Like I'm saying Jamaica. Love it. 
Jamaica means home, a place that contains a melting pot of dynamic culture. It also has dynamic people which are fun to be around and just to be a part of a whole entire family. Jamaica to me means history, culture and paradise. I love everything, the people, the food, the way of life, the greenness of the island, the sea. I love the way of life in Jamaica more than anything. I like the sunshine, I like the smile on the people's faces, I love the laid back attitude. Yes, I love the music, I like the people. Jamaicans I have met in many ways they're like Scottish people. Jamaica means some of the most interesting people in the world, the home of the greatest music in the world, and oh yes, the best food in the world. What better than ackee and salt fish or potato pudding baked on a coal stove. Not nicer than a nice roasted yellow hot breadfruit. So Jamaica means all those things and more. Oh, Jamaica mean the world to me because that's the land of my birth. So it mean a lot to me and that's a place where I would never forget. If it's good or it's bad, it's my own. Mish, I'm not under here in it. Okay, so we're talking to my auntie Debbie who ventured to Jamaica and worked uh, six weeks as a registered nurse to University Hospital, Kingston. So where were we? You had ruled out Jamaica. You said you would never work there. You would never live there. I really kind of just listened and I didn't say anything. I didn't pass judgment. I just thought to myself, well, you must have a reason and maybe hopefully you would come around to changing your mind. Then you said, you know, you're, you're doing this work placement in Jamaica. I can't tell you the joy that I felt in my heart because I thought that's a big move. You would have had to have deeply changed your not only your mindset, but your heart because you suddenly found this love for Jamaica. Yeah, I mean, I suppose the love was always there in a way because as I said, I was gone on holiday and I loved mm. the country, I loved the people, everything, but I just couldn't see myself living over there or working over there. I just couldn't see that. I couldn't see that vision. That didn't... But why? What was that? What did you feel at that time that told you no? Do you know what it was? I just think it was all the negative um, things that people used to say about Jamaican. Oh, you know, people from Britain go over there and get robbed, this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a lot of negativity more than anything else because I always thought the island was beautiful. It was just the feedback that I was getting from other people who was experienced. Mm -hmm. But then that is why you should never really listen to other people. You should really go and try things for yourself because you don't really know until you, until you experience it first end. So you stayed with me for the six weeks, which was excellent because it gave you a chance to sort of make yourself at home with somebody that you're familiar with and show you the ropes and stuff. I knew that you were working, so you couldn't take me to it. Right. The person I was speaking to, I was saying to her, I saw several buses coming down there. Do you know which one's the best one? So she asked where I was coming from. She advised me against taking it. Any taxi. Like, yeah, she, well, she said the robot taxi. Do you know the one that you, you, you flagged down in the raw? Yeah. I didn't know that there were licensed one that the government knew about and there was just people doing their own thing. I didn't know about that it's on the monday morning now i thought you know what i'm gonna have to flag down one of these taxes i mean my thing was if i don't open my mouth how are they gonna know that i'm a british <laughs> so i flagged one down or whatever got in and just nod my head to the passengers i didn't want to talk remember i didn't want to know that i was foreign because of what mm -hmm. she said don't take the taxi that was just my way of protecting myself kind of thing right because a lot of people are afraid of taking taxis because of what other people say as exactly. well. Exactly. This isn't saying you've got to really experience it for yourself. After mm -hmm. the bus never see me again until I was coming home. Because the taxi was <laughs> faster. It was the same price and it was faster. Yeah. So I would take the bus some occasion, but most mornings I took the taxis and I would talk in the taxi because I would, the fear had gone by them because I was Yeah, so you built up your confidence now. <laughs> exactly. I just feel like they're just trying to make a living. They're not out yeah. there. You know what I mean? They're, they're just then, to, there's no harm. Right. They just want to get you in your cab get you to the destination get that money mm. and then go back and, and, and get more people and i got to know a lot of people through that a lot of regular taxi drivers they kind of saw me every morning going to work so i would more or less get the same one or two taxi drivers pick up every morning which is good and but I'll... what's the what is the what's wrong with being british that's the thing no there's nothing wrong with where's british. this fear people instill this fear in your mind you shouldn't speak because you don't want them to know you're a foreigner and what because they, they, what do they mean yeah because they, they, what's wrong with it? right this is it because they said they will rub you or whatever because if you come from far and you have money they will rub you and not everybody is like that you know and mm -hmm. i think that's really wrong for people to say because just yeah. the same way people come over here they can get robbed as well do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. We've got crime over here. We're not crime free. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
So I think it's wrong for people to put that in people's business because they're third world country and, you know, that a foreigner comes in and, you know, everybody just wants to assume attack, that, you know? yeah, you're going to get robbed, right. attack, kill or whatever. You know, if you if you put out that fear, obviously you're going to look vulnerable, you're going to sound vulnerable and you're may you're more likely to get not attacked. Or, but you know, you know you, something untoward might happen because you're putting out your vulnerability exactly yeah. just like if you were to over in england exactly that's it's it, how you carry all yourself in the world, all over in the world you know i've been mm. to america every bit and, and it's the same thing i don't talk unless i suss at a situation first but then more more often than not like in jamaica i didn't have a problem i might end up going to the supermarket by myself i end up walking from the hospital off at home by myself I end up going to off a tree by myself i i i've done things because you know, I, I met people over there and end up in their house by myself. Now, these are people I know for a week or two. And, you know, telling people when I got back home that I've done this, they're thinking, oh, my God, you are crazy. Mm -hmm. But why am I crazy? They're people just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, just, they're just normal people. And I think I'm a pretty good judge of character anyway. And I've got the Lord with me. So the, the Lord had my back. So I knew I was going to mm -hmm. be safe. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. I've got I think it's amazing when you can change people's perception. And I think that's the biggest thing because so many people are following other people's mindsets and, uh, and building their perception around that. And when they hear stories like yours, that you've come back, you've met all these people, you've been very open yeah. and receptive to the people that you've met, that you've been able to adapt. And if you can do it, I can do it. I think anybody can. Lovely people. Yeah. But you know, when I was in hospitals working, I met some really lovely nurses. And But the, the thing that they, all asked with a common question or a common theme that was running was um how do you get a job in england i hear that they're paying enough money now mm. i just need to clear this up if, if if i can i did tell them when i was over there we get paid probably about three times the amount they get paid mm -hmm. but our cost of living is probably three or four times the amount of theirs yeah. so it balances itself out so their wages fit their cost of living our wages fit our cost of living so it, mm -hmm. it balances itself out because i've got a lot of jamaican nurses in the hospital working with me now they realize that they're struggling just as much as the ones in jamaica maybe mm -hmm. they've got a lot a bit easier because you know they've got the we've got the health service over here so they all their treatment and everything is free but free to a certain extent we still have to pay an uh, nhs tax. yes but um that is not a quality of life. That's I wasn't living. I'm not living over here. I am just merely existing from day to day and planning the next holiday. Isn't a lot of people do that? I remember doing right. that, counting down, booking the holiday, and then it was just counting down the weeks, wishing for that getaway. Look at and me. really, in effect, yeah, you're, you're wishing your life away. So what would you say to those people out there who were considering going out to Jamaica to test the water, whether that's professionally, um, going out there with their family, ultimately, in the long run? But I've been speaking to a couple of people actually in your field who, you know, want to know more information about how they would go to a hospital to get some vocational experience. Um, but how would you recommend it and what would be the next steps they should follow? OK, first of all, choose which hospital you want to work in. You know, it depends where you want to go in Jamaica, what level of nursing you want to see. If you want to see trauma, you've got to go to the, the KPH. Just find that department, right. But where you were for that, those four weeks, you can honestly say that you were you know witness to sort of normal levels of trauma there wasn't no major violent um traumas coming in your they department. were really shocked because i had done two weeks medical one week surgical one week um, uh, a &E. mm &hmm. and when i was in a and &E, i actually said to them i'm quite bored because we get more trauma in our a and &E than you do over here i said more sound like you need to be on the front line or in the army <laughs> or something like that because i did think you, you can't that. get enough i did think of that but you know I thought, unfortunately i'm a bit too old for that now <laughs> But, but yeah, I got really good exposure, really good experience. I love the way Jamaican people put They're so resourceful. They can use what they don't have and make something. <laughs> you know make saying? something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're so, they're... I'm sure there's a saying for that. I'm sure there's a Jamaican saying. Oh, there must be. That. Make something or not eat or something <laughs> like that. So what you've got to do basically is find out which hospital does what you want, like the, the level of care that you want to provide, the level of trauma or the level that you want to work at, and then contact the manpower director or manager excellent so you once turned your back on sweet sweet jamaica and jamaica opened his arms and still let you in so what have you got to say to jamaica no i'm not gonna say sorry enough because <laughs> <laughs> because as i said before i was just going on hearsay and i was i was just doing my little holiday vacation loving the country but i was going on hearsay so i was scared to venture out 
of my safety zone. Do you know what I'm saying? But once I lived it, and I'm talking about getting up in the morning like the natives over there, getting washed, just going to work, coming on my maybe I have to do my shopping, a little bit, get a little bit from the supermarket on the way home, and do my washing and everything. And you, you really did. You got fully absorbed in the Jamaican. Yeah. Way. And when I came back, first thing I did was apply for my Jamaican citizenship passport. And I didn't even know that when you did that as soon as you got back. That's fantastic Exactly, because I thought, no, this is where I want to be. I thought, I'm not, well, I'm, I, I was sad when I came back. I was sad to come back. I went for a terrible time because I thought, this isn't where I want to be. I don't want to be back in England. So I applied for um, my Jamaica citizenship and passport and stuff. And it came through in, in a really good time. And then I had a letter a couple of, about a month or so ago to say that they invited me to a ceremony to celebrate my citizenship. So hopefully I can see you living in Jamaica and working in the next few well, years. Well, I've got a five-year plan, yeah. And I am just in the first year of my five-year plan. So your experience that you had in Jamaica was very rewarding, you would say? Very rewarding, very positive. I open up, I saw and experienced a lot. It was unbelievable. And I can't even touch on mm. things that I saw and experienced, really. You really got to, if you're thinking about doing it, just do it. Because I got a lot of negativity, not a negative feedback before I went. Mm -hmm. As you said, I didn't, I couldn't take Jamaica other than the hotels. But once I lived it, I thought, oh my God, all this time wasted. I could have been, I could have been there already. Yeah, mm. so I'm saying. You were really missing out. And now you've taken that back. You've spoken to a lot of people and you're inspiring and hopefully opening other people's eyes to the possibilities of working and living in Jamaica. Well, this is it. I mean, even my, even, yeah, my children as well. I mean, I said, well, I'm going to live in Jamaica and hopefully, you know, the, the love of Jamaica would just overwhelm them like it did with me. I'm really glad that you, you know, opened up, showed people a bit about your experience and your prior perception to Jamaica before flying out there and working for four weeks in University Hospital Kingston as a trainee nurse. So I'm really glad you shared your story. Thank you. But then, no problem. It was my pleasure. But all I can say, my final note will be don't think about it, just do it. Because if you think too long, you're not going to do it. Just do it. Go over and experience them living. Not Don't do the holiday hotel experience and live in the way of life and you'd realize that no matter how much money you get over here nothing compares nothing at all compares to the way of life and the quality of life you can have in jamaica nothing at all compares Thank you for listening to the Home and Away Show. We'll be back soon with more from the series. If you would like to comment, suggest a topic or be a guest on the show, send an email to radio at michelledmore.com. <laughs> Bamba.